Welcome to part two. Lord, why have you forsaken me? Uh, like we indicated on part one, God does not forsake his own, but he just leaves you for a moment at your, like to your strength, to make the right decision so that he promotes you. The other illustration I would like to give you, you take note of uh, the three Hebrew boys before they were thrown into the fire. When, when the king confronted them or when Nebuchadnezzar confronted them, uh, at that moment, of course, they answered, uh, their answer was fueled by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But when they were taken to the fire, uh, that's when the transition happened. They, that's where the miracle was. When they were taken to the fire, you know, God that does not really sometimes guarantee you that he's going to work out the miracle. He just wants to see your reaction so that he does the miracle. So the fact that they held on to their faith and their confession, and when they were thrown there, during that transition, that's when they saw that there was an unseen fourth man with them, among them. So God does not forsake you. With Daniel, it's the same. He says, a king, I have not sinned against you, but if you see it fit, put me in the den, and they took him there. That moment, everybody, every son of God, at some point in time, they feel like they are forsaken. They feel like God has left them. But God just wants to see how you are going to react to the situation so that he promotes you. So what are you going through right now? Make that executive decision to say, I will never leave my position in Christ. Where did God leave you? Don't move yourself. Hold on to him. Hold on to God. Are things uh, turning upside down? Hold on to God. Enoch walked with God. And one thing that I would uh, like to say to everybody, is, it's not like when they say a man of God walked with God, it's more like Abraham. They seriously had trying seasons because you live in a certain house, then God tells you that leave this house, go to a, a land, not to a house, I will show you, to a land. So meaning to say, I will be your shelter, but spiritually, in the physical, he does not have a shelter. So at some point in time, of course, Abraham also felt forsaken. But however, there was grace when he chose to trust in him. There was more grace that abounded to provide him with shelter and uh, substance. Right now, Abraham is, is uh, a great name. He's the father of faith simply because of the decision that he took. He chose to trust in him. At some point in time, everybody, every son of God, prophet, priest, whatsoever you are, you will feel forsaken. But that's the moment where God actually wants to see your reaction, your love for him. So I would say to you, I would like to say to you, hold on to Jesus. Believe and have faith that he is with you. And if you feel like uh, things are even going worse, just rest in him. Just like how Jesus did it. He said, I commit my spirit and my soul into your hands. Meaning to say, you now need to rest. You now need to rest. I'm going to come with another sermon where I've done this same exact thing and I've seen like instant miracles. And the Lord, I'm sure, he will definitely do it for you in Jesus' mighty name.